first of all, I would like to um, welcome the, all of you to uh, this, you know, like the talk. We mentioned about the 50 years of ASEAN and 20 years ASEAN China partnership. And we also have uh, such a great honor to, to welcome uh, the director, Pai Tung, from uh, the Ministry of the Foreign Affairs with us today, and also the general uh, Surasit Tanatan. He's also you know, a beloved friend of uh, myself, and also he would like to, to come here to, to pay the, the, the discussion's role at the, the beginning, and also stay with us up until the, the final discussion. But first of all, I would like to give the opportunity to uh, express our objective of the talk for today. Because um, now, the purpose that we organize for this talk for ASEAN studies at Chiang Mai University, that is the unit of uh, the mission of this disseminating knowledge, <clears throat> developing academic works, and also play some of the roles that we have the mission to play some of the think tanks and provide some of the knowledge and the data and to be uh, a friend so many uh, countries that we would like to uh, place the roles within ASEAN for 10 countries and also the other organizations from out of ASEAN. So that is the, the aim that in conclusion in charge for our uh, center today. But that on the behalf of the center of ASEAN study, I think uh, from the all participants who uh, have you know, participate in this uh, conference, we have a fruitful day for international conference that we so excited to, to present. And that is uh, uh, the aim of the conference day. So from now, I invite Professor, uh, Vice President, Professor Rom Dranupong to deliver the opening remark. Sir, please. Thank you very much. The Mr. Pandemit, <coughs> Director of the Center of ASEAN Studies at Chiang Mai University, Kun Pai Thun, Mahapanna Thokna Thorn, the Director of Dialogue and International Organs Relation Division, Department of ASEAN Affairs, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, General Surasit, Dr. Narumit, distinguished participants from many upper ASEAN countries, namely Cambodia, Vietnam, Laos, Myanmar, <coughs> and Thailand. And ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed a great pleasure to me to be here this morning on this very special occasion. Two major occasions, significant occasions, the 50th anniversary of ASEAN and 20 years of ASEAN-China relations. <clears throat> For five decades, as we know, since 1967 to 2017, ASEAN has continued to progress and strengthen with new initiatives. The future of ASEAN's ability will remain relevant should not be taken for granted. We must remain outward looking to be able to play a central role in the peaceful development of East Asia. We must think not only to our national interests, but posit them against regional interests. The last 50 years have shown that regional stability and prosperity are better served with cooperation rather than pursuing selfish interests. Given the rise of populism and inward looking nationalism across the world, present and future ASEAN leaders need to join and face this uncertain future together. Last year, marks the 50th anniversary of ASEAN-China strategic partnership, the cooperation between both sides has created 
greater opportunities to share prosperity to all. Today, we're very lucky to have important guest speakers from five ASEAN countries, upper ASEAN countries, uh, namely Cambodia, Laos, Myanmar, Vietnam, and Thailand, who will share with us their insights about ASEAN-China cooperation from various perspectives, including a historical and political lens. This is therefore a great opportunity for all participants to be able to see the topic from multiple angles and develop better understanding of ASEAN-China relations. <clears throat> I should like to also promote another upcoming event in Rishimai University in collaboration with uh, Center of ASEAN Study Center together with Dr. Narumit, who is here today, that we have another uh, uh, larger international conference. I also like to inform the Ministry of Foreign Affairs too that you are uh, most welcome to join this we call the Itai Lu or Road Belt Initiative, Digital Innovation in Mekong Land Chan Jiang. And the Center of ASEAN Study Center will be the uh, will play a key uh, be a major role in, in, in running this international conference which is going to be organized on the 20th of September this year. So I've been talking a lot, I believe, among academics and between China and ASEAN relations among ASEAN themselves. Works need to be done. What happens after these 50 years, after 20 years of, of China ASEAN relation has to be put into concrete action. And with this Itai Lu or this Road Belt and Road Initiative, I believe uh, that this digital innovation, which is compliant with the national agenda, would be something that we should be able to extend the work of our SMEs, small, medium enterprises here, in, not only in Chiang Mai, but also in Upper ASEAN, to be able to extend the markets in China. You all know the trade between China and ASEAN has been increasing, only to small, privileged, companies, yeah, only a few privileged people would get these benefits and like to get this to the, to the grassroots so that the economy of the country would be better. Hoping that this international conference in which we are going to be hosting on the 20th, 21st of September would be another step towards the extension of this uh, uh, 50th anniversary of ASEAN and also 20 years of ASEAN-China relations. And I should like to extend my sincere gratitude to the Director of Center of ASEAN Studies, Dr. Nisip Pantamit, and the, the Director Mpaitun uh, Maha Panaporn from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and everyone here in participating this uh, international conference and hope that you all will be able to use this platform to share your thoughts and ideas so that we can bring outcome that will be of benefits to all of us. So with any further ado, I should like to declare this international conference open and wish you all happiness, success and prosperity for the ASEAN region. Thank you very much. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, my name is Sopanna. Uh, I'm from Cambodia. Um, uh, I work at the uh, Department of International Study uh, of Royal University of Company. Yes, um, today is uh, my great honor uh, to come here to present you 
uh, to join the talk and present you about uh, uh, the Cambodian, well, ASEAN, uh, China relation, the Cambodian's perspective. But uh, my topic will be specifically on uh, trade relations between Cambodia and China. Uh, basically speaking, it is about uh, re-examining the determinants and constraints of uh, Cambodian China uh, trade connectivity. So uh, uh, this is um, uh, from what I uh, uh, done the research, uh, composing of uh, three authors, me and the other two authors. So uh, in fact, um, it is kind of a empirical research study. But um, today, uh, I would not uh, present you uh, some uh, technical uh, uh, research methodology and would just go through uh, some of uh, our main finding in our research. All right, so um, so here is uh, the, the contents that I am going to uh, uh, present to you. Uh, first, we are going to talk about the uh, uh, context of the study, well, uh, research objective. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, to talk about the pattern of the Cambodian threat uh, with the world. And then we are going to go to a uh, uh, threat uh, pattern with uh, China. Maybe I should be standing here, right? Uh, and then uh, we are going to talk about research, uh, empirical result and discussion, uh, Cambodian strength, uh, our challenges uh, to threat on activity, and uh, conclusion. And last but not least, we are going to talk about uh, a policy recommendation. So, um, so uh, uh, we have uh, discussed a lot about uh, 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 why countries should trade with each other, for example, theoretically speaking, and also uh, we have done a lot of uh, empirical research to prove that uh, trade has a positive impact or negative impact. Uh, what matter is uh, uh, that uh, first thing first, how uh, uh, to make a country benefit from uh, international trade, right? Let's say, for example, uh, Cambodia trade with ASEAN, other ASEAN nation, for example, Cambodia trade with China. So how how should we uh, benefit uh, from uh, such trade connectivity? Uh, secondly, how should Cambodia, as well as ASEAN as a family, uh, uh, prepare ourselves uh, uh, to ensure the sustain uh, sustainably positive gains of trade from trade, and uh, what should we uh, do to promote a trade connectivity between our nations and China? All right. So, um, uh, talking about Cambodia, talking about Cambodia, if we take a look at the data, uh, uh, we have seen that. Uh, 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 Cambodia have uh, experienced uh, more than 100% of the country, uh, the trade. The trade accounts more than 100% uh, uh, of the country GDP. Simply mean that, uh, uh, well, uh, we also we experience uh, trade uh, deficits almost every year in the last uh, 20 years or two decades. Simply means uh, the import. Uh, 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 is more than has been more than the export uh, uh, when we threat with the rest of the world. And well, uh, uh, if we take a look at the number, all right, in 2011, the export of goods and services accounts uh, for uh, more than 50, yeah, around 4, uh, 54, one, uh, point one percent of the GDP, while the imports accounts for uh, 59. Point five of the GDP, which result in a trade uh, balance deficit of about five percent, and this is uh, 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 about the number of uh, export and import product that Cambodia 
uh, do the trade with uh, the rest of the world. Uh, we have seen that uh, uh, from, uh, from 2000 to 2015, uh, the number of uh, products that we trade with the rest of the world have uh, moderately increased. Um, particularly, um, if you take a look at uh, the red, the, 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 the black line, black line uh, uh, represents which represents the number of uh, uh, imports products in 2000 account for around 2000, yeah, almost uh, uh, 3000. But uh, in 2015, the number of uh, uh, our imports product increased to 3000. Uh, 3, uh, 200, yes, uh, and also it also happens uh, to uh, uh, export products which increased uh, from uh, 696 in 2000 and to uh, more than 1000 uh, type of products that we export to the rest of the world. So this proves that uh, uh, Cambodia have uh, diversified our export and import or trade and activity with the rest of the world. Uh, this is uh, the export destination and our importer. Uh, uh, so if we take a look, look at uh, uh, the graph, it shows that the US and EU are the largest export uh, destination of Cambodia. Uh, but China uh, stood uh, as the sixth largest exporting market for Cambodia in 2015. Well, uh, China, China was the largest importer to Cambodia in 2015. Yes. And here, I uh, saw about the trade value. Uh, 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 basically, uh, uh, I divide uh, well, uh, for uh, uh, research methodology reasons and also data availability. Uh, we mentioned we, we divide uh, the China into three main regions. Uh, first, China mainland, uh, Hong Kong and uh, Macau. And, uh, well, you would see that uh, uh, the imports from China, uh, which is represented by uh, the, the yellow uh, bar, the exports from Cambodia to China, uh, and, uh, well, uh, we do trade with uh, China mainland more than the rest of uh, uh, Chinese regions. Yes, uh, uh, somehow, um, uh, according to the diagram, uh, you would see uh, the volume of the ex imports have uh, increased substantially uh, from 2000 to 2015, but uh, 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 trade, uh, the exports to China seems to decrease uh, a little bit uh, from 2008 after during the financial crisis and uh, it started to uh, increase uh, moderately uh, uh, since 2013, uh, 14 and 15. Uh, this is about the uh, uh, number of products that Cambodia traded with uh, China uh, from 2000 to 2015. Yes, um, uh, the trend seems to increase uh, from year to year, even though um, well, uh, even though we have uh, uh, some kind of uh, uh, short deficits uh, uh, when trading with China, but uh, we, would, we, we would say that uh, uh, the number of, of products uh, that we trade with China has increased, uh, showing that um, uh, we have uh, somehow um, uh, diversified uh, our export and import with China. Um, in the last uh, uh, 20 years. And uh, here is, uh, uh, if we uh, uh, compose uh, a trade uh, between China and Cambodia into uh, uh, the type of product at a two digit, digit uh, we would say that a, a trade and activity between Cambodia and China, um, especially when uh, we talk about export, right? seems to concentrate uh, on only two sectors. But if we combine those sectors into one, it would be just like a garment and textile industry. And then uh, we export uh, machinery, <coughs> electronic bags, vegetable, right? Well, um, 
the imports from China highly concentrated uh, in uh, textile, right? textile uh, product uh, representing more than 80% of the import. And this is uh, in 2015. Well, uh, this data was uh, uh, um, extracted uh, from a World Trade, um, World Integrated Trade Solution of the World Bank. Well, if the uh, 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 decomposed uh, trade right, between Cambodia and China into, uh, um, how to say, a, a stage of uh, processing, right, uh, uh, composing of uh, consumer goods, intermediate goods, raw material, and capital goods, um, the light black one refer to the import, light black one import uh, in thousand US dollar, while the export is represented in the blue one, the blue bar. And uh, clearly it is since that um, we do import, right? Uh, we do import excessive, uh, uh, in a very uh, large proportion of uh, intermediate goods and uh, capital goods from China. Right? So while we uh, seem to export uh, uh, more of the consumer goods back to China, well, uh, uh, still we can see that uh, the import uh, far exceeded uh, uh, of the value of, uh, that we can export back to China. So what is the implication of that? Right? Uh, one more thing, let's take a look at um, uh, uh, if uh, uh, trade connection uh, 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 by the composition of uh, 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 the trade in industry um, into agricultural goods, industrial goods, and uh, patrimonial. So, um, regarding the export, well, we export uh, industrial goods uh, to China more than many other sector compared to uh, agricultural and uh, patrimonial, where we um, we don't really have an export of pattern to China and import. Okay, um, at the same time, at the same time we also import um, uh, industrial goods, uh, um, more industrial goods from China. So, uh, a trade connection between the two countries concentrate uh, highly on um, industrial uh, sector, manufacturing sector. Um, this is... Um, some kind of uh, regression model, which I uh, plugged the data into a gravity uh, 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 regression model. Um, a little bit um, complicated if you are not in the field of economic or econ econometric, but uh, allow me just to introduce you the main idea of uh, uh, this uh, finding. Uh, so I took um, uh, trade connectivity, both export and import, as uh, the factor, right? And the other, <coughs> and this, this, and the factor that I suppose that I included to uh, determine or indicate uh, a trade connection uh, with, between Cambodia and China, consisting of a TCI. <coughs> TCI here is refers to a trade complementary index, right? And uh, this one is the uh, exchange rate uh, fluctuation. Uh, air trend, uh, which is due, which was used to proxy for uh, logistics quality. Um, GDP, yes, uh, GDP of both country can also affect the trade. And uh, FDI inflow, uh, and yes, uh, this is just a constant. Well, um, we have seen that, uh, that uh, the quality of logistics uh, uh, GDP and BI have a positive impact on the trade connection between the two countries. For example, uh, EFD promotes logistics services to, to, to make it more efficient, let's say, for example, infrastructure, road, uh, both uh, soft and uh, hard infrastructure. We can promote the trade connectivity between the two countries. GDP also play a very important role. So uh, uh, the light uh, or the higher economic growth we have, then we, we tend to uh, uh, trade with each other more. And uh, MDI inflow 
also have a, a positive impact. But at the same time, uh, the fluctuation of uh, uh, exchange rate have a negative impact. Simply mean if the exchange rate is highly fluctuated, then it would uh, affect negatively to trade connectivity, right? Uh, TCI uh, has a minus sign. Uh, simply means that uh, trade between the two countries tend to happen in the form of intra uh, intra industry trade. Right? Intra industry trade simply means we trade with each other along the or in the same industry. So uh, the question is, does it mean trade value increase with competitiveness, as suggested by? the alternative uh, hypothesis. Because um, according to uh, many research that have been done so far, it's proved that uh, uh, many countries, even a uh, country in ASEAN, Vietnam, Cambodia, uh, when while trading with the rest of the world, all trading partner, it seems that uh, uh, it's follow the inter-industry uh, trade uh, form, simply mean uh, uh, those countries trade with each other uh, with different industry. Uh, um, if you are familiar with the uh, comparative advantage uh, concept, like, but this one, it's, it's different. We, we trade in the same industry, but why? Does that mean we are competing with each other? Not really. Why? Well, uh, the trade flow, uh, both export and import between the two countries highly concentrated in the two products, such as uh, uh, garment, textile, and uh, machine and electronic. Uh, the value of the export from Cambodia uh, to China is way smaller compared to that of the imports from China to Cambodia in the same industry. One more possible reason is that, um, uh, as you have seen uh, the data that I presented uh, to you at the moment, we import uh, uh, more um, intermediate goods and capital goods from China. Um, yes. And we export uh, back to China the consumer good, the finished good. And, well, uh, uh, so for example, uh, 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 if we take a look at uh, the Chinese investment in, in Cambodia, uh, mostly they concentrated on uh, government and textile industry and also construction. So, for example, uh, how it works is that they import, most of the firm import more uh, intermediate goods like, uh, uh, the, like the fiber, for example, or many other or the machine, the, uh, capital goods, machinery and equipment from China and uh, we, uh, the Cambodian worker, let's say, for example, uh, play more important role in doing the assembling um, uh, 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 assemble process, right? Uh, and then we export uh, to China uh, some portion. But uh, as I mentioned at the moment, most of the products that we uh, produce actually export uh, to EU and America markets, not to China. Um, yes. <coughs> and uh, this is another table of the regression model, but if you are not familiar with the table of its such kind of a, a, a model, then uh, you don't have to make this uh, complicated. Just um, uh, the key concept, just you have to know about the key concept. Uh, uh, the whole thing, well, uh, this, this table I included uh, uh, um, the index, uh, five indexes of economic freedoms uh, uh, provided by uh, the foundation uh, heritage, right? So, consisting of a government integrity, uh, financial freedom, uh, trade freedom, uh, business freedom, uh, tax burden, right? and the rest are the same. So, uh, all of the five variable or determinants have positive impact on trade connection between the two countries. For example, uh, uh, related to government integrity, for example, if we uh, reduce uh, 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 some kind of uh, red tag or uh, uh, complicated uh, procedure of the import and export, 
let's say, for example, uh, corruption, let's say. So it would uh, 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 increase the intensification and diversification of uh, trade connections between the two countries. Trade freedom we provide uh, uh, freedoms to uh, invest, uh, to decide uh, uh, on their business, for example, and tax burdens. So I use a tax burden as a proxy uh, uh, to indicate about the level of um, um, tariff and uh, some other non-tariff barrier. Well, it is quite hard to find any data, quantify uh, data to uh, represent the uh, uh, tariff and non-tariff barrier. So that is why I decided to use this one. So uh, the higher tax uh, burdens, it means country have um, well, uh, uh, have a uh, 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 more open policy, uh, uh, low uh, tariff and uh, non-tariff barrier. So all of the five have positive impact. So we should promote better government <coughs> integrity. We should uh, uh, pro uh, develop a financial uh, um, uh, system, provide uh, investor uh, with more choices. For example, okay, uh, related to doing business and investment, we reduce the uh, uh, tariff and non-tariff barrier, for example, would encourage the trade connectivity. And uh, the coefficient of uh, TCI and uh, exchange rate uh, uh, fluctu fluctuation and uh, uh, logistic right, are, are still the same. So uh, we should let's say by this uh, finding, we should uh, improve the logistic quality, uh, uh, hard and uh, soft um, infrastructure, for example, the higher fluctuation of uh, exchange rate would negatively affect the trade connection. Right. Um, so here, uh, I would like to present you about uh, some of the Cambodian uh, strength. This uh, information uh, I collected uh, from various sources uh, and also includes from in that interview uh, with the firms, uh, with managers uh, from uh, various firms, uh, Chinese firm actually. Uh, first, uh, it, uh, we have uh, uh, in the last two decades, it, we have proved that we have a, a good economic performance as indicated by uh, stable foreign exchange rate, so um, uh, uh, quite stable. Um, high economic growth, both GDP and GDP per capita, right, per percent, and also inflation rate. So uh, uh, the government has been doing quite good job in uh, stabilizing our economic performance. So uh, with the change rate of roughly around 3% per, per year, uh, economic growth has been around 7% uh, in the last uh, uh, 10 years. Yes. I'm so sorry to interrupt. Um, there's been a little bit of change in the schedule. Um, we're going to ask for the next presenter to come, and after he, um, uh, he makes the, present the presentation, then we'll have all the Q&A all, all wrapped up together with your, your nation and, and for next one is Vietnam. Oh, sorry, Laos. Yeah. All right, OK. So okay, so can conclude from here. Um, I just, uh, yes, um, this is a uh, Cambodia's challenges to trade and activity. Uh, well, this is just uh, um, the summary from what we have uh, uh, learned. Uh, high concentration of uh, trade and action, uh, complicated cost and procedure, right? And uh, we have uh, not yet a fully efficient public uh, services. Uh, as actually uh, uh, the, not, the, the not yet the fully efficient public services are more concerned by the importing firms. And uh, infrastructure, uh, we still, most of the time, we have seen that we have uh, are still under development. And um, lack of capacity to meet the technical standard uh, required by the importing country. Uh, currency depreciation of the Cambodian men exporting uh, competitor relative to Euro and uh, US that leads to uh, less competitiveness of the Cambodian exports. Right? And uh, also Brexit pose uh, our uh, post the challenges uh, to our uh, threat connection as well. 
Well, um, interestingly, uh, uh, well, uh, let me just uh, leave this, some of these points uh, for Q&A part. So, um, here are the conclusions. I don't have to mention it again. But uh, let's move to... Uh, Let's move to uh, uh, policy recommendations. So here is the main part. Uh, uh, Cambodia should diversify its exports of products to China to exploit more benefit uh, and to reduce its run, uh, vulnerability from highly concentration on uh, only government sector because uh, the marginal gains uh, contribution from this sector is slowing down. And also, Cambodia should have uh, uh, take advantage from currently growing trade sector, both export and imports, uh, with China as an engine to diversify by establishing the linkage, linkage uh, to other potential competitive industry and increase the employment to sustain the long-term uh, growth. And last but not least, Cambodia should has uh, uh, should still. Uh, enhance the efficiency and competitiveness by reducing the cost contributed by non-trade barriers such as delay of export procedure, logistic performance and infrastructure, and also custom clearance procedure. So um, I guess um, here is the picture that I took the field uh, visit, the field, uh, field work uh, with one Chinese uh, firm. Um, it's me on the right hand side and then my co-author uh, and the two, the two guys, two handsome guys are the Chinese uh, manager. One is uh, Mr. Wang, a financial manager, another manager and the girl is uh, my research assistant. Another firm that is a uh, government uh, uh, firm. Yes, another one. And he is a construction uh, firm that uh, happens to uh, took the, uh, take the picture from the inside, sorry. Uh, and thank you for your paying attention. Okay, we have uh, Dr. Pan Pakip, uh, Deputy Director of General Biles Japan Institute, to make the presentation. Maidi, Sohati. First of all, I would like to uh, express my sincere thanks to uh, Dr. Nisip for inviting me here. I'm very happy to visit the uh, beautiful city of uh, Chiang Mai. And it's kind of a uh, still in flight, because we always hear fly in and fly out <laughs> over our heads. Uh, well, um, my colleagues from Cambodia providing you a broad overview of uh, China and Cambodian relations, but my talk will be more on the micro perspective. I will show you the case study of the local adaptation of um, farmers and government sector against the Chinese investment uh, on uh, agriculture sectors. But at the beginning, allow me to provide you some uh, basic uh, information and a his historical review on the China and Laos relations. I believe we maybe have a little bit more time. Uh, so here's a first pack of Laos PDR. The GDP, we are a small country, but it's a fast growing. The average of uh, growth is over 7%, mostly 7 to 7.5% annually over the past decade. But recently, it's a little bit slowed down. At, uh, and the last year, uh, at 6.8%. 6 and the GNI per capita now is about 1,700. Now the latest may be close to 2,000 US dollars already. And if you see from the structure of our GDP, uh, it's 42% uh, in service sector, uh, almost 30% in industry sector, and agriculture sector account for only 17% of uh, GDP. Uh, the thing is that labor force participation, you can see that um, about 78% of the workforce still engage in the agriculture sectors. That means we are still rural economy, we are still agrarian economy, that most of our Laotians are engaged in agriculture sector, but 
they produce a uh, very less uh, GDP uh, share in the structure. Um, recent uh, economic development in the past two decades, especially the last decade, is driven by the um, we can say the resource boom or natural resource boom. Uh, we receive a lot of uh, FDI inflow into the hydropower sector and mining. And the uh, country uh, opened to receive more FDI inflow in late 1980s. And at the beginning of 1990, actually Thai was the main uh, player in terms of FDI in Laos for most uh, 10 years. Since the uh, year 2000, uh, become a little bit more diversification. We receive more investment from Vietnam and also China. But in the last five years, now China has come very fast, uh, drastically, uh, in every sector. And now, the, uh, in the last uh, 2011 to 2015, the stock of FDI inflow from China is over of Vietnam and Thailand together. So now, uh, they, they came to invest in just uh, five, six years now. It's account for more than half of the total stock over the past three decades. And the, the thing is that they um, make a lot of investment in many sectors, mining and agriculture sector. So at the beginning uh, in 2000s, we only find Chinese in northern part of Laos where we share border. But now they are everywhere, even the southern uh, province that we border with Cambodia. I think we see more Chinese than Cambodian over there. <laughs> Regarding to the agriculture sector, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, we are agrarian economy, but we were uh, subsistence farming, uh, we less export. It's only for the food security and domestic consumption. We rarely export to China. Or this is a draw from the data of China that uh, how much uh, China import from uh, Laos. So you can see that it. Uh, steadily increase, especially in recent years. Uh, comparing to 2006 and 2016, the number increased more than six times in the past 10 years. So I can say that now the agrarian country start to be the real agrarian country and we, uh, we have to adapt with the quick transformation affected by Chinese investment. Uh, in uh, many sectors, rice, and maize, sugarcane, and other products are the major products that we export to China. So Chinese investment, especially for the plantation, is a uh, very much uh, crucial scheme to uh, develop the rural area of Lapidia and to transform the agriculture sector and also local livelihood. So, uh, in recent years, we also affected by uh, another dimension is climate change, uh, the temperature, the rainfall, and many things, and uh, biodiversity affect a lot on the farming. So our team want to study the impact of Chinese investment and taking banana plantation as a case study. A number of uh, researchers have uh, tried to investigate the Chinese investment in uh, northern Laos, for many cases, uh, pumpkins, rice, cassava, but banana is very typical one, and it's uh, uh, expand very quickly uh, in mainly in Longanta province and Bokeo province. So, as a case uh, of the Longanta, I uh, conduct the survey in 2016. I visit uh, three uh, districts, uh, Long Nam Tha district, uh, Singh district, and Long district, and we conduct the field survey there, uh, taking the data from the support of uh, ADB or Asian Development Bank. So we have a key informant interview to the local authority from the agriculture sector, from the provincial natural resource and environment, and also at the district as well. We conduct the focus group interview to farmers 
who belonging to the farmer production group, who belong to the water use uh, so association in the uh, local committee. And I would like to share some uh, findings to you. Uh, let's check from the change in the temperature. Normally, when we talk about climate change, we want to have data more than three decades or four decades or even longer. But uh, I can find only the data from 2000. It's a little bit short. But we can see the significant change that the temperature uh, compared to average is um, fluctuating every year. And the number is quite big. It changed uh, close to one degree in annually. That means we facing the climate change in terms of the um, weather. And this one is more important in terms of uh, farming. The pattern of rainfall that I plot to you here in four diagrams, starting from year 2000 and uh, until 2015, every four years. At early uh, 2000, you can see that the peak of the rainfall is in uh, July, and it start, uh, we start to have uh, heavy rain in uh, May, and at the, the beginning of the season of farming. But later in 2012 to, to 2012 to uh, 2015, it shifts. It's almost one month delay, just in the last 15 years. And we also face the fewer uh, rain fall. This means local farmers have to adapt new technology, and they have to change the way of doing farming, otherwise they cannot survive. And it's difficult for them to adapt by themselves and with a little support from the government side. And then Chinese investors come and they, okay, I provide you capital, I provide you technique, I provide you seed, and I will buy everything you produce. I provide you the market. Then, so local people uh, now are uh, dealing uh, many things with uh, Chinese uh, investor and trader. Uh, let's see the adaptation of farmers. Uh, actually, we have uh, three forms of investment approaching to uh, um, local farmers. Uh, at the national level, if you want to have an uh, agriculture uh, plantation over 100 uh, hectares for land concession, you have to seek approval from the uh, central government and it would take times and many procedures. With the, uh, between the uh, 30 hectares to 100 hectares, you can apply for approval from provincial or district level. That this is a second line. And actually there are only two forms officially allowed by the government. But China choose the third way or third form. So they go directly to the village, talk with leisure, talk with the farmers, and then they grab all land concessions very quickly. How can they do that? Because they are very clever. They check, okay, if you are a rice uh, producer, how much you can earn per year of uh, one, session, uh, one uh, season. And they give you the land seeking of the land over what you do. This means you do nothing. You already grab the money over them. You produce one seasonal rice. So everyone, they release their land to Chinese investors. <laughs> the land uh, price increase in double in less than five years. So every by by the regulations, the banana plantation allow only to um, make it the. Uh, in the mountainous area, but not in the rice field. But now, farmers, okay, you don't need to produce rice anymore. So you just uh, provide land to Chinese <coughs> investor, and you earn a lot of money in a very short time. That's uh, the big issue. Uh, because of that, you see, here's um, some picture that I took from the field. Um, there are many garbage, uh, pollution, air pollution, soil pollution, water pollutions, 
caused by the overusing of the chemical and pesticides by Chinese investors. And this is a very big issue for local farmers. Why? Because they cannot breed. All the um, chemical uh, products and pesticides are written in Chinese, imported 100% from China, and local people cannot read. And they don't know what is inside. They only use it as the instruction by the Chinese technician. And then uh, now it's become health uh, problems for local people. The numbers of uh, visitors to health center and the numbers of uh, report on the health uh, problems increase quickly. So it becomes uh, noisy for the investor because so many people claim about them. Then Chinese investors, again, they crave it. They make a rotation for uh, regular to move from this district to another district. Normally, the, the higher level stay less than two years, they will be located to other province in order to make the noise become not that loud, you know. So this is a very uh, big issue for the farmers. Because of this uh, issue, the government decided to suspend, make a, a suspension of banana plantation become effective in early 2017, starting from Long Nam Tha and then Bo Kheo, and now many provinces now we ban uh, banana plantation from uh, China. But this is only allow, uh, uh, apply for the new investment. That means we will not accept the new investment project from China. But we have to keep uh, continuing uh, the existing project. Why? Because um, the government has uh, not enough capacity to have an alternative uh, option for farmers. If we quit banana, what we, we do? No choice. That's why they, they have to keep. And most of the project is uh, five or six years. So we have to wait for that. This is very uh, become very difficult for Bafo. Bafo is a provincial agriculture and forestry office and district level, and also for uh, provincial natural resource and environment. There are lack of staff and there are lack of budget. Um, for example, in Long District, it is reported that at least more than fifty villages were affected by uh, banana plantation or the pollutions. But annually, maybe the uh, local authority can visit less than 20 villages to, to raise an awareness campaign or to monitor the effect of the, the uh, banana uh, pollution. So this is very uh, difficult for local authority. There, there are not uh, insufficient uh, regulation for them, and some are unclear. They don't know how to deal with this, and they they less experience on uh, these two. There's some notice in the computer, and I cannot. Can you see? Maybe antivirus or something. <laughs> So now, um, in terms of uh, biodiversity and the uh, effect by the chemical misuse and overdose, it's uh, really difficult to control because um, the, the sell this kind of uh, pesticides or chemical um, product is not at the market. It, they operate or they run uh, like a Chinese restaurant and on the back, yeah, they're selling this. And many times, local uh, authority, they, they find this. It's uh, difficult. There are many routes, and it's easy to mix this kind of uh, uh, 
um, chemical uh, products. And for farmers with uh, less education, and they, they, they now get familiar with uh, this kind of uh, use. So they feel that, oh, even we go to the um, office or the center for agriculture promotion under the government, they have no advice or they have no alternative uh, like uh, um, pesticides or other uh, fertilizers. Uh, so. so they have to rely on the Chinese. Chinese is kind of the, the magic for them because they only grab the land and they say, okay, you need to put this to your land. And it's kind of a doctor in terms of uh, agriculture. We have Chinese doctors everywhere now. <laughs> <laughs> so it so become very uh, difficult for local farmers. The government want to keep the food security. Uh, one, one big issue is about food security. If most farmers quit doing uh, rice farming, we will face the food security, uh, insecurity issue. Another thing is about the um, misuse of the uh, income that they gain from China. So they receive a big money easily. Now they do not uh, put it on the right way of the investment. They only increase their consumption. They buy a smartphone, they buy a motorbike, and they buy gold. It's not investing in education or reinvesting in the agriculture sector. That's a big issue. So now we have uh, a new Chinese uh, Chinatown in many areas. So that's a big problem. As uh, the policy uh, discussion and uh, recommendation, I think we need to have more um, cooperation among uh, public agencies because we have uh, less mechanism to connecting between uh, um, Department of Agriculture, Department of Commerce, Department of Environmental. So we have to increase this. And the government should uh, try to conduct the environmental assessment because we don't have a clear evidence how much uh, the soil pollution are going on or water pollution are going on. Now it's kind of a perception. It must come from banana plantation, but we don't have evidence. So this is a uh, very important thing. And uh, this is the last slide. So the government should try to uh, promote a high value plants instead uh, of a banana and other uh, uh, monopoli uh, monopoli crops, uh, monoculture crops. Because I'm in, in uh, Chinese investor, I, I'm not sure, but maybe they have a quick or they have a very good uh, planning. This district, if they invest in banana, and they will know other crops. But in other village group, if they promote pumpkins, then only pumpkins. For other, it's a watermelon, for green bean. It's kind of uh, that they try to control by the area. So in fact, there is no competition between Chinese inv investors among themselves. Maybe very well organized <laughs> Chinese team. So we have to think and uh, consider for the zoning of the agriculture promotion in local area in order to protect the farmers. Uh, providing more training, including the technique, fertilizer using, and also uh, marketing. That's uh, all for my presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, any questions, please? I will be like at the mobile uh, man for you guys. from the Faculty of Political Science. Um, I, we also uh, conduct a kind of um, you know, survey in Piaming Rai where the Chinese um, investment in banana. But uh, according to the um, result we get, 
there is no uh, evidence of uh, overuse of um, of uh, pesticide or you know uh, the chemicals because you know all the uh, personnel involved, including the district, um, the officer, no, not the Nampur Pube, he has already everybody get the um, you know the, get the blood sample because um, uh, they think that in the area it should you know perhaps if there's a chemical it should affect all a kind of food chain. But it doesn't, you know, have any significant um, uh, evidence that uh, they have uh, uh, overused uh, the, the chemicals or pesticides. So I think um, uh, it's uh, really a kind of a warning um, because on the other side, you know, uh, west side or that, we see plantations all um, all along the, the, the river. So um, that's why uh, our concern as well whether we we will have this kind of uh, you know problem but uh, according to you said that uh, two hours you know situation all the bananas are exported to China so I think um, they have to pass to you know ACCQ the, the, the um, Chinese authorities um, who you know out of the the, the the plant and animal disease or that, but it, it passed through. So means that uh, you know, uh, in this case, the investor are Chinese and consumers are Chinese as well. So I think um, this is not a kind of a sustainable model, you know, because the like in Laotian, that you provide only land and you know uh, labor so i think uh, this um, we we uh, also uh, try to have a policy a recommendation to to our government on uh, this uh, particular uh, subject but uh, apart from bananas there also you know the i think might be green beans to uh, fuck yao and uh, i think uh, what else you know there is as you said several uh, plants as well so it uh, like uh, in Tiamina about two thousand right, you know, for, for us we we calculate in you know the, the but in, in your country more in, in hectare, right? Uh, right. But also you know we try to um, uh, estimate any uh, damage to the environment like uh, in river, you know, because in river is passed through the Tiamina River and but there's some uh, rumors that you know the there's some fried uh, dying fish or some, uh, you know, the, um, the, the water that they pump in using in, in the, in the uh, banana plantation. So I think um, all in all, we, we didn't find any um, misuse of land at this stage. But I think it has to be better to control, you know, because as I said, it's not uh, sustainable of uh, uh, model of uh, plantation. I think you might have any uh, comments and recommendations for us on this matter. Thank you. Okay, uh, thank you, Dr. Naramit, for your uh, sharing uh, experience of uh, time. Um, first point, I think I agree that um, I also uh, said in my talk that we don't have uh, uh, um, the proof or evidence by any uh, Case we don't actually um, it's a very difficult for us because we don't have a lab a very good lab to do an experiment on uh, soil pollution so it's difficult for even uh, NAFRI a National Research Institute for uh, Forest Agriculture and uh, Forestry to prove this kind of uh, the effect by the investor so I agree on that uh, second point is um. You mentioned about the direct consumption by the Chinese uh, uh, people. Yes, uh, you are right. This because it's a um, kind of uh, contract farming. Even uh, written or verbal contract farming. All produce uh, banana are 100% export to uh, Chinese market. But the issue is that um, it's um, not formal trade. Only fields of this. Uh, um, uh, banana uh, product go through the international pro uh, border checkpoint. Most of them go to the 
uh, the small or uh, how to say we call like like a smuggler. Smuggler. <laughs> yeah, it's a, like a chef because we have a long border informal channel with the Chinese <laughs> and uh, also banana is among one of the six uh, product that Chinese government and Lao government agree to make it uh, easy procedure in terms of export including watermelon and, and rice and others so it, in terms of uh, direct consumption yes it's not effect to Laotian but in terms of uh, production still they overuse this and I think maybe one irregular point is that uh, the unusual coal in early 2016 because of this um, maybe there is a new uh, infection or others I don't know they, they, they use even more chemical and pesticides and the uh, Chinese invest investors try to control this and uh, the last point is about the an army I think like uh, we often talk in Thai like you have a uh, many SME or micro size it's like an ant army because they, they come in under the different name of the Chinese investor but I think they have come from the same group so in this village and another village it's the same uh, investor or trader but they come in a uh, different name so it's very difficult to control because they it look like small but in fact it's big The, the final point. Yeah. Uh, after we we've tried to find, but you know all the medicals, um, pesticide um, in Thailand are controlled by you know the Food and Drug Administration. So I think this uh, also perhaps actually the you know a kind of uh, chemical misuse. Whereas when I travel to Laotian side, you know, in Kuei side, and I think they call Nam Ngao over there, or they have a plantation. Um, that's import directly, you know, the chemicals from China and all rebel in Chinese. So I think that's no control in Lao by Laotian yes. government. So I think that might uh, exacerbate more of the, you know, overuse of chemical. Uh -huh. Thank you. Yes, you are right. I agree on that. the impact of the way the Chinese um, farming model is because I'm, I'm a fan of bananas. So it's probably have to worry and check where the sources of these bananas come from. Anyway, um, by the way, I have one question concerning your model analysis. Um, I know that there are several um, contract farming models in Lao PDR, right? Chinese be one of them. Um, there are others um, contract farming that promote good agricultural practice or GAP. For example, the one that is supported by um, um, development agency of OECD country like GIZ. You know, they do that a lot in Laos. And I was just wondering, um, they, they will definitely uh, Im uh, implement GAP procedure in other agricultural farming practice, and including the banana. So I wanted to see how how much. Um, uh, how big of these gap uh, quality control measures has been used in banana uh, compared to does it does it apply to the one that Chinese farming model is doing now? Yes, thank, you. Um, thank you for your question. Uh, you raising a very good point in terms of uh, um, policy. Uh, the government also write or uh, put it in, in every policy paper that we try to promote gap and good agriculture practice. We try to increase the value uh, added of the uh, agriculture product, and we try to keep a uh, uh, clean, even uh, not organic, but we want to have a uh, less. But it's a sort of dreaming, I think, and we we still dreaming. And in the policy paper, yes, it's always there, and, and I think more than three decades already. But in practical, uh, such kind of a. Uh, pilot project uh, supported by GIZ or others. It's very uh, small scale, and most of the project are uh, still at the uh, big city like uh, Vientiane and now some in uh, Northern Park, but not really implemented. I also confirmed 
with the local authority when I conduct the field survey? Did you receive any uh, special training or development project by uh, development agency? They say no. Uh, none of this kind of project are uh, implemented in Luang Nam Tha. So it, it's uh, still a daydream, I think. It's, it's a good uh, in, in terms of um, the idea and policy. But in terms of implementation, it's still far away to reach that point. So, banana seems to be banana. That's a very long story. <laughs> <laughs> so, let me switch some of the questions to Cambodia. Just want to initiate some of uh, the arguments about Cambodia. You mentioned about intra you know, industry. And last time I went to visit Phnom Penh, and I saw a lot of, you know, labels that works, you know, like throughout the day and probably late night. Is there any, you know, like things beyond the policy about uh, the value added terms, you know, more than the, the labor which that the Chinese try to, um, you know, land and settle down in the garment and textile that you mentioned? You mean like, uh, is there any regulations of the, the, the Cambodian government to be concerned, something like uh, in case of Lao PDR about this thing, like labor regulations. Mm. Uh, last but not least, I think it's 19, you know, like agreements between Chinese and Cambodia, you know, occur in the uh, uh, Lan Chang Mekong corporations uh, about a week ago. Is that impact that's kind of thing too? Well, uh, thanks you for. Uh, uh, Dr. Nasib Nisit uh, for the question. Well, it is uh, true that uh, uh, Cambodian worker, uh, especially working for the Chinese firm in garment industry, garment uh, sector, uh, most of the time they work uh, overtime. Well, um, um, uh, uh, last year the government had just uh, um, imposed or actually led to increase the minimum wage. Uh, for the worker working in uh, government industry, uh, I guess um, if I'm if I'm not wrong, uh, it is now up to uh, 172 uh, US dollar. Uh, sorry. Uh, so this is the minimum wage. This is the basic wage uh, uh, in this sector. And uh, actually, um, uh, frankly speaking. Uh, we only have a uh, minimum wage in this sector, the rest of the other sector we don't have yet. Um, with this page, um, workers could hardly survive because uh, the cost of living in the city is now higher, very, very higher, very high. And uh, at the same time, those workers have to uh, uh, send back uh, uh, some amount of uh, the money that they receive from uh, uh, their work. Uh, back to their hometown, to their parent. Um, so with the higher living standard in these days, uh, and also with the obligation to send back some money, they have to work over time. That is the old key. But um, uh, they receive an uh, extra uh, uh, hourly wage uh, 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 compared to the normal working hour. So some of them are working like 10 hours or even 11 hours uh, per day. So imagine this is also hard working. Um, yes. So uh, I think. Uh, so um, uh, the government, uh, particularly, um, uh, 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 have uh, regulations uh, to limit uh, the standard of working hour for eight hour per day. But well, uh, regarding the OT, uh, uh, as long as uh, they the firm could ensure that a uh, uh, worker could earn higher wage. Uh, 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 the working hour, the extra working hour, would not really affect their uh, health, for example, then uh, they could do it. Um, well, um, regarding the 19th uh, uh, agreement, well, uh, it is good. Uh, actually, this is not the first time that we signed the MOU with China uh, uh, last year. Uh, uh, press uh, President Xi Jinping also visited uh, Cambodia and we also signed a lot of agreement, uh, 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 one of which is uh, to initiate uh, the high-speed 
uh, infrastructure in Cambodia, and also interestingly regarding the uh, importation of uh, mangoes uh, from Cambodia to China. But um, uh, my concern is that um, uh, uh, the agreements or, uh, or something that we said in the paper are good, but uh, we still uh, lag behind of uh, uh, implementation. Well, um, allow me to add up a little bit. Uh, uh, well, uh, we produce a lot of mangoes, but uh, it is hard for the farmer to uh, export to the other country, even uh, to Vietnam, to, to Laos, and to uh, Thailand, because, uh, frankly, uh, frankly speaking, um, uh, we question more about uh, the capacity of the farmers, because mo most of the times they are concerned about uh, the quality or the Use of um, the mis uh, the overuse of um, a chemical or, or that affects the quality of the product. That is why it is hard for our farmer to export. Thank you. Please, I leave the question. <laughs>
economic corridor in Thailand. So how do you fit for this difficulty in your engagement with the uh, trade pattern with China? Can you see the cooperative effort that we can establish among our arts and uh, to deal with China? China. That is my chair of information. Not there is the question. If you have something for for the floor, I think that would be beneficial also because we have good uh, research program uh, for trade pattern. Thank you. Well, uh, uh, thank you, uh, Professor, for the question. Um, well, uh, 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 one of uh, uh, how to say uh, um, it has been the view that uh, the strength of Cambodia is uh, being so open uh, to welcome for investment from uh, overseas, uh, from China, especially now China stood uh, stands uh, the largest uh, proportion in terms of investment, uh, investment uh, stock of investment. Uh, before it used to be uh, uh, Cambodian left. Thai, uh, uh, Korea, uh, Malaysia, but now it's Thai in the last uh, 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 five years. Uh, so, um, but, but at the same time, it is also true that our weakness is also being so open. Yes, uh, why we are open uh, to uh, for investment? Uh, for example, we have a, a, a tech incentive, tax policy. Uh, we uh, reduce uh, extensively uh, in terms of uh, uh, you know, documentation requirement uh, uh, processes. Why? Because uh, we do not really have uh, many choices uh, but to open ourselves to accept uh, for the investment from overseas because uh, the government uh, uh, themselves, uh, even uh, our domestic investor, are not now really capable of uh, bringing the the capital goods uh, to invest in this country. That is why we have to welcome for uh, the investment from abroad, not only China, but also from uh, ASEAN country, uh, Thai uh, investor also play a very important part uh, in uh, developing our uh, country uh, economy, economy as well, and also Vietnam. Well, um, uh, Vietnam, uh, Vietnam is a, a, a visitor, uh, uh, um, um, stand the largest uh, uh, um, uh, um, share the largest the, the number of uh, visitor uh, tourists tourists uh, uh, from Vietnam uh, number one and then uh, followed by Chinese and then Korean so this is one of the uh, cooperative uh, methods that we could um, uh, ensure. Uh, to better uh, implement uh, our dreams of being a, a, a ASEAN family. Um, I guess um, uh, uh, that's it for me. Eh? Yes, um, uh, thank you, General uh, Surasik. Uh, well, uh, regarding to the trade relations between uh, Laos and China, I think Laos is um, uh, historically we heavily depending on the trade with Thai. Uh, we import a lot uh, from Thai with less import. And uh, the Thailand uh, has been long and the biggest trade partner in terms of both import and export. But in recent years, I think the gap between uh, the export from now to China is uh, closing to export to Thailand. And I, I think, I, I believe soon, uh, China will become the number one trade partner in terms of uh, export. But uh, in terms of import, we, we still import a lot from Thai. That's uh, one uh, thing. And regarding to your point on uh, free trade, or now we're living in, in the new era of uh, economic inter integration, AEC, or industry 4.0, or whatever, uh, at the urban area or in the last city or where we have international checkpoint 
I think it's quite uh, good to promote uh, the free trade by the new technology and we, we are using uh, Asikuda system for uh, faster the customer uh, clearance or something. It's uh, so somehow very good. But if we look on the other side, like I said, we have uh, very poor in terms of uh, human resource in a uh, local level. I, I, I'm doubt myself whether we try to introduce this kind of new technology to local uh, staff, uh, government staff. It might be uh, not forward, not not forward the things to to be be uh, more facilitation. But in opposite, maybe it will take a longer time and many more procedure for local uh, government staff in the northern part of Laos. If we want them to engage with uh, new uh, like a uh, Asikuda system and other system, it, it might take even longer time and might not be the threat uh, facilitation, but inverse, it's uh, backward. Uh, Apologize for calling you the wrong title. <laughs> um, I just would, would like to add a little bit uh, from what I miss at the moment. Um, well, uh, if we take a look at the uh, threat and activity between uh, Cambodia and China, most of the time we uh, import uh, substantially uh, the uh, intermediate goods, uh, capital goods from China uh, as, uh, uh, to use uh, in uh, the production process, uh, assembly process in Cambodia. So um, I think, I think uh, throughout uh, our research, uh, uh, to, to benefit uh, trade, uh, uh, connectivity, we should promote the production of uh, uh, some of those uh, intermediate goods and capital goods within Cambodia. Um, I think uh, this is a good chance uh, for some other ASEAN countries, like especially uh, some other countries like uh, Thailand, Vietnam, uh, many other countries, uh, uh, Laos, even, yes, um, uh, yes uh, to, to come to invest in our country to uh, produce. Uh, those uh, kind of good and then uh, make the linkage to the final uh, process of production so that we can ensure uh, the better growth, not just only the GDP but also GNI, uh, the, the, the gross national income, to ensure the better living standard of the, of the, the local people, uh, not, not, not just the high income uh, to the foreign foreigner to, who comes to invest in our country, so this is what we have concerned more. Thanks.